on the union budget plus the union territories of <coughs> jnk budget and the demands for grants for the union territory of jn kashmir <coughs> 2425 i congratulate the honorable finance minister on presenting her sixth budget and every year we have a lot of expectations from her because it's not india is no more insulated it's a big global player over the last few decades so everything that impacts globally impacts our country as well so while we are talking about india which she also i think <coughs> mentioned in her budget speech that even repercussions globally that is happening what's happening in europe what's happening in south america clearly is eventually going to affect our country as well but i would like to make a small point before i get into the union budget is that this is one more year after them making them a union territory against their wish <coughs> is we are passing jammu kashmir territory bill and their demands of grants mr amit shah ji the honorable home minister had committed to this house that within a year they will hold elections and there will be the budget of the state will be discussed in their assembly so i take this opportunity and request the treasury benches to keep their word and i hope next year elections are held in jammu kashmir and they pass their own budget in their own state so i think this is a very important point and it must be done <coughs> because if you can hold national elections parliamentary elections are held in jammu kashmir why aren't assembly elections and anyway you have committed to the court that by september they are supposed to hold the elections this year so i don't know why we are doing the whole election of 24 and 25 but even if you are doing the budget i request with full <coughs> compassion and empathy for people of jammu kashmir they deserve to make their own decisions for themselves well the four engines of growth sir for a robust economy are investment consumption exports and fiscal deficit if you study the entire budget for the last decade of this entire government i don't want to be a prisoner of the past and the history as the debate is going on from the treasury bench because actually i was disappointed with the treasury bench today we are used to such wonderful speeches even if they were opponents and i miss most of them today because today i think the entire they probably had very less to stay in their budget because the treasury bench only spoke about things which have happened 50 years ago people have apologized and moved on it has nothing to do with our economy and the future of this country or the growth of this country so i want to speak only about the budget today and i'm going to limit my entire speech to that so if you look at investments itself now how much investments have come into this country what was the idea of the investment and reducing the corporate tax they reduced the corporate tax under the pretext or maybe they thought it was a wonderful decision at their level that we reduce the corporate tax so that more investments come but that is not reflecting in the numbers that the government has given the gross fixed capital uh, formation of the percentage of gdp if you look at it in 2013 14 was 30.70 while if you look at 23 24 it is 30.80 so the reduction bringing in gst i'm not saying they have made a lot of effort i won't say governance is continuity i'm not taking away from the fact that this government has done nothing in 10 years well gst was the congress's bill which they implemented we may have differences in the way of they have implemented it was a good effort digitalization what they have done in banking i'm not taking away from the credit but at the same time was it too little too late to reduce corporate tax is that one reason why investments are not coming and i think the government needs to even introspect that why investment the environment is not as good as it should be consumption sir consumption is clearly not doing well especially the agrarian crisis and the rural economy and, and data speaks for itself louder than you and me arguing about it i'm not running the government down but they need to accept that there is an agrarian crisis in this country a new word which i also have learned over the last few years is shrinkflation sir if you go into fmgcs you will notice that all these big fmgcs have started a new product line which is actually called what is shrinkflation is shrinking showing the inflation and shrinking so if the biscuit is for 5 rupees there were five biscuits in it now there are four the size of the biscuit has the packaging has become less you look at any big company be it levers be it godrej all the big boys they have started this new concept of shrinkflation and this government is denying the fact that there is a price rise there is an agrarian where is this inflation coming from it's a completely new concept in economics 
but it's a marketing activity for all these big companies which directly impact jobs, the economy, and it's reflecting. It's a reflection, no? When FMGCs do, don't do well, data speaks for itself, sir. Exports. Now, everybody looked when there was a global issue with China. Everybody looked at it as China plus one. So there was a great opportunity for India to become the plus one. Has India truly become Atmanirbhar Bharat? Make in India. All wonderful sloganeering, but has it really converted into jobs? So if it's China plus one, what number are we globally? China plus one has become Mexico. China plus one has become Vietnam. China plus one has become Indonesia. We are at number four globally, sir. So with China plus one, we haven't done as well as we should have done. And this was the sloganeering of this government when they had a clear mandate. They had a 300 MLA. They could have done anything they wanted. So what went wrong in Make in India? I think we all need to, uh, all need to introspect of policies. What is just not no point changing policies. Change is inevitable in any economy. We understand that. Third, fourth is fiscal spending. Now, in fiscal spending, what is important is, yes, after the global issues, the slowing down, after the pandemic, well, India has recovered in the K-shaped, which it has. We will give credit. But who has really done well? I mean, the Honorable Finance Minister constantly spoke about fiscal deficit. Sir, the FRBM Act, which was a wonderful bill, even if the BJP and under the leadership of Atal Bihari Bajpayee ji, the act came, the UPA continued it because governance is continuity. It was a very good bill. We continued it, 3% for the states, and we should not cross 5% for the country. Yesterday, the Honorable Finance Minister said that 4.9 is what they're plugging at. Is it really going to stop at 4.9? Because my concern is, once the supplementary demands come, there is. I'm putting a number. I'm not saying my number is perfect. But I'm not a finance expert, nor am I an economist. But from whatever little that I read, it will probably go up to 5.6 is what is the rough estimate. Now, if the fiscal deficit goes, then are we, what is this, what did we bring this law for? Should there be no good practices? And are the states also following the same? Just now, the Andhra, uh, the gentleman spoke about it, Bharat, right? Bharat spoke about it and he said in Andhra, they don't have money and their chief minister, who's such a learned man, is going to take two months to find out where is their fiscal deficit at. Well, my state is not far away from that either, but I will come to that. But I want a clarification from this government for my understanding and for the country to know that if the FRBM Act, they are, you're saying you're at 4.9, well, the data doesn't say so. Absolutely. You know, where they have really re reached at 4.9 is not the great policies of this Next government. That time, they are saying 4.5 is the cost of who? How are you reaching that 4.0 number? Because this is not the policies of then Modi government and now NDA government as they call themselves. But the Modi government has survived this whole thing, not because of the great work they have done. It's the hard work that this nation and the people of this country have done. And the credit goes to the RBI. Actually, with this whole or the entire house should thank the RBI and the governor, Shri Shakti Gandhas, who gave them a dividend of 2 lakh crores. That's why they are at 4.9. Otherwise, they would not have been at 4.9. So this is something very important. I think we should really thank the RBI, who's done a wonderful job and actually saved this government. It is not their credit. It is the RBI's credit and the right and good, policy, good policies that they have managed to come here even at 240. Otherwise, they would have not reached there, sir. Another question, which my colleague, Dayanidhi Moran, very rightly put up, is about the census. When are we going to reach? I don't see anything about the census in this entire budget. Now, two, three questions I want to ask them. Very pointed. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just asking them. Sir, they talked about women and how much more they want to do and how they've got the women reservation bill, which is still not implemented. But unless you do the census, how are you going to implement the bill is my first question. Second, delimitation. Our constituencies are huge, sir. 23 lakhs, 24 lakhs. When I started, there were 14, 15 lakhs voters. Now it's 23. And what are we getting for uh, uh, the money we are getting is 5 crores. In Maharashtra, one MLA gets 5 crores per year. Here, 5 crores per MLA when I have 6. So actually, it's equivalent to 30 crores. So the 6 crores per MLA. We are getting 5. So unless you do this delimitation, how are we going to manage through? So is the government thinking of doing this and where's the funding for it and the other point is MP lads 
either you increase them or stop them. Because scrap it either or make them fit. Sir, because what is an MLP doing? So what are we achieving? My MLA gets for 5 crores. I am also getting 5 crores. He is 3. Today, 15. So what are, we, what are we achieving? 30. So you are saying increase it to 15. We get 5, they get 15. So now it's diff every state varies. So why don't you increase this, sir? That is one very important question. So what it is about the fiscal deficit, I want a clear answer from this government about the caste census. We definitely want to watch. They talk about just two, three very important points. I'll make it as short. I know my colleague is going to speak. Sir, in GST, everything you ask this government, they said the GST council will decide. I want to ask two very small questions to the Honorable Finance Minister, that the income tax department has unearthed one huge fake money changing there are companies which have input tax credit. Now, input tax credit under the goods and services tax, over, it's like some thousands of crores of a scam. Now, what is what has this government done to make sure such scams don't happen? What are the checks and balances? Anything you ask this government, they will say, oh, it goes to GST council. Now, I have a problem in my state, sir. Your state, you may not have that problem because I don't know what your finance minister does, but unfortunately in Maharashtra, our finance minister, which data says, never attends the GST council meeting. So my state is always honored. So what, what is the plan B for it? If a finance minister does not attend GST council meetings, Maharashtra is never heard. So I want some justice for that and a solution for that. Because besides the finance minister, nobody can speak in that meeting. Well, but he's your ally, so you'll have to tell him Mr. that. Chair. So that's one very important thing. Sir, <laughs> sir, the other very important scheme which I want to ask, since it's short of time, I will leave one or two important things, but I will... I, I want to ask one pointed question because it's really important. This, they keep talking, which even my... In Dayanidhi Maran talked about employment. And I think the whole thrust of this government was killing and employment. I want to ask them, they started a very good scheme. I'm not taking away from the intention of this government. Was production link, which is a PLI scheme, production link incentive. Now, if it's a production link incentive this government has given, if I, I stand corrected here, Raghuram Rajanji had said that there was some company in Gujarat which they gave some semiconductor company, which 2.3 crores was the incentive given is the kind of money we have paid. Employees, employees. The employees are paying, that's the level they were given. But no outcome, and not only that, one of the cabinet ministers has agreed that number. I don't know who, I don't want to name anybody. But he said that for the incentive that we have given that government, for that particular unit in Gujarat, it's 2.31 crores per job, per employee. Now, if this is the PLI scheme, is this what you thought of giving in this government? Is this how you're going to create jobs? And now the new one is employment link incentive. So your PLI has already failed. Now is this LI, ELI is also going to fail? You've already failed even in fiscal deficit thanks to the RBI you are saved. So where is really this economy going? What is the, what are the, just by making all these announcements and giving all these uh, schemes, there is no great there is nothing that you are quantifying, sir, in this economy. The numbers are not helping for what they are saying in these various schemes. They are very proud of feeding 80 crore people. I am also very happy if they are feeding 80 crore people. But how come when they keep saying this multi-dimensional poverty index that this government talks about, every time they are saying we are getting people out of poverty, how come you are still after 10 years feeding 80 crore people? I mean, it's the same number. If in 10 years, sir, 80 crore logon ko, they are so proud to say they are feeding them and we are feeding them. I'm very happy if they are feeding them. Then how come nobody is going then this whole multi-dimensional poverty act? What is this for? They are doing nothing for EPS 95. To so much they talked about pensions. EPS 95 was a commitment this government made. I, I mean, I hope his soul rests in peace, but Arunji is unfortunately no more with us. But Arunji had mentioned it, that EPS 95 is something we commit to. This government hasn't done it. Agrarian crisis, as I said, milk, the commerce minister is unfortunately not here. Somebody was saying, oh, that Viplav, I don't know if he's still here. Ah, oh, he's here. He was talking about milk production, wheat production. This is data from 10 years. There is no great innovation. And what have they done with milk prices? 
with exports, casein, onion. They lost two seats in Maharashtra only for because of banning this onion. Their allies are begging them to allow onion exports. Nothing they have done. Even after losing two, three seats and after doing miserably, they have still not done, which is fine because then it helps us in the state. So it's okay. Once we come to government, we will make sure all agrarian and the farmer is respected, not just by hands me down and ravedies as their favorite word is, but respectfully give MSPs to our farmers. It's their hard work that we are paying for. So I request this government because according to last, very small, sir, according to the percentage of the GDP, in agriculture, what is this budget is the increase over last 10 decades is only by one, not even 1%. In agriculture, it was 3.52, now it's only become 4.2. In health, from 1.15% of the GDP, it has gone to 1.85. Education, 1.8 has only become 3%. Infrastructure, their favorite, sir. Infrastructure, even in Maharashtra, they like only big... Uh, ticket project. They only work for infrastructure, and you know obviously why. So, budget of three. Then, social justice is 1.5, is also not some great thing. So, sir, it's, I just need to ask this government that they have to clearly, in the reply, give us what is the plan of this government because I am as concerned as Andhra because they have just come to power and they are suffering, as they are saying. Same thing in Maharashtra. Every time there is no fiscal management in that state. So then why did we pass that bill? If there is no good discipline of finances, sir, this country will unfortunately, I with pain say this, would be a complete economical crisis. We don't want to go our neighbor's way. We want to be firm and committed to a robust country with good growth, with very good fiscal management and a strict one. So I urge this government to kindly reply to all these questions and reassure us that I have no problem with what they've given to Andhra and Bihar, but please don't give us step treatment Thank you. because of what the voters have decided, because this is a constitution. It has, elections have to be fair and just. Thank this you. You made your point. Thank you. Thank you. You made your point.